for the inductor, we know that the EMF that is uh, induced is equal to the, the rate of change of the current. Remember, the EMF is only equal to the rate that the current changes, not how big the current is or uh, how small it is, but how, how quickly it changes. So that's the important thing with inductors. Also, of course, uh, power we know is the voltage times the current. Using 1, the equation for the EMF, we can rewrite this now as power equals Li di by dt. What we want to do again is like we did with the capacitor, we want to work out a small amount of the energy supplied in time dt. The small amount of energy is going to be the power times dt. We can write dw equals Li di. Here we're going to look at what the total energy will be when the current goes from zero to its final current. So the total energy is supplied while the current increases from zero to a final value, capital I, uh, is going to be, we're summing all these terms up now, uh, all the little di's. We bring the L out, that's a constant. Again, exactly the same sort of form here. So it's I squared L half. So that's the actual energy of the inductor. That's what the energy will, the energy stored in the inductor from i equals naught to its final value of i. So after current has reached its final steady value, the rate that the current changes is zero, and so power input is zero. The energy that has been supplied to the inductor is needed to establish the magnetic field in and around the inductor. So when the inductor current decreases from initial value i to the reference value i naught, the inductor does an amount of electrical work on the external circuit equal to half Li squared. For example, if the current in the circuit is interrupted suddenly by opening a switch, the energy may be dissipated in an arc across the switch contacts. We can also consider the energy to be associated with the magnetic field itself by considering a very simple case. The toroidal solenoid here, this system has the advantage that its magnetic field is confined completely to a finite region in, of space in its interior, so the, the magnetic field is completely confined within this interior between these uh, coils of wire. Here we assume the cross-sectional area is small enough that we consider the magnetic field to be uniform over the area. The volume in the toroid is then approximately equal to the circumferential length L equals 2 pi R multiplied by the area. The self-inductance L of a toroid solenoid is L equals U I N squared A over L. That's one we found earlier for a solenoid. So that's how we calculate the inductance of a solenoid. It's given by the the permeability of the material, the number of turns, and the area divided by the length. When the current in windings is I, the energy then stored is using this, this form here, W half L I squared, replace the L term here for the inductor, so we're going to place that inside here. That gives us this equation here. Now what we're after is like we, we did with the capacitor. We want the, the, the energy per unit volume, right? So to get the energy density, energy per unit volume, we think of this energy W localized in the volume enclosed by the windings equal to L, obviously the total circumference or areas, 2 pi r, times A, the air, this cross-sectional area. Then we can write U equals the energy per unit volume, which is L times A. Once we substitute in this W term here, we end up with a half U naught Ni squared, I squared over L squared. The A's have basically cancelled there. And uh, we're still using L here, we're not using the 2 pi R. So we end up with a half uh, permeability, uh, the number of turns times the current squared over this total circumferable length squared. So that gives us the energy per unit the, the energy density, which is the energy per unit volume for a uh, inductor. Using the equation for a magnetic field in a toroid, we saw in previous lecture, mu naught ni 2 pi r, which is the same here as u naught ni over l, okay, We're saying l is 2 pi r. Therefore, given that, squaring and rearranging, we find that uh, n squared i squared l squared, if we just square these two now, b squared over u squared, then uh, we can substitute this into 1, into equation 1, substitute this back into equation 1 here, and we end up with the, a nice, really simple equation to work with, uh, this equation. So this equation is, uh, is what we end up with after manipulating this and this. 
we end up with the energy density for an inductor, which is the energy per unit volume, is equal to the magnetic field squared over 2 permeability naught. This is analogy to the expression of energy per unit volume in the electric field of an air capacitor. Remember the air capacitor was a half epsilon naught e squared. Well we got here a half b squared over mu naught, so they're very very similar in form.